Hey everybody, Professor Brown here with another video, this time about the protein buffering system. Several people have asked me for it, so here it is. This is a polypeptide. All your proteins are polypeptides. They consist of many, many amino acids strung together end to end, connected by these peptide bonds, like we see here. Each amino acid contains a carboxyl end, which is mildly acidic, and an amino end, which is a little bit basic. And the nice thing about using individual amino acids is that we can see because of the peptide bond, even all of your big long proteins are still going to have an amine hanging off of one end and a carboxyl hanging off of the other. So this is nice for us because your body is full of proteins all with these in these dangling carboxyl and amino ends but if we tried to draw a big long protein on this screen to look at buffering it would be very very busy and slightly confusing so we're going to use a single amino acid to represent all the proteins so that we can see all the amazing things that your proteins can do for us in regards to regulating pH so here is an amino acid in solution now obviously there would be a lot more stuff in this solution but we're trying to keep things simple. We're really interested in what can happen with each end of this amino acid in changing um, environments regarding hydrogen ion concentration. So also, I should note that this is not what your amino acids look like normally. This is not the actual correct ion state. This is a dramatization for YouTube so that we can look at how the amine and the carboxy end respond to perturbations in pH. Okay, so nerd stuff aside, let's go on with even more nerd stuff. Assuming that this is a balanced, homeostatically happy solution, so all is well, we would have two hydrogen ions. Okay, so if, if all is happy, we have our two hydrogen ions, and then we pick up an additional hydrogen ion. Oh no, we've become more acidic. Homeostasis, I just told you, is two hydrogen ions on the screen, and now we have three. That's too many. Fortunately, we have the amine end of our amino acid and of any protein that would be laying around, and so that hydrogen ion is going to scoot over here, get taken up by the amine, and now we have this extra hydrogen attached to the nitrogen here, and now this whole ammonium functional group is positively charged, but the hydrogen ion is covalently bound to the nitrogen, and therefore it's been removed from the solution, and we only have two hydrogen ions in the solution. So we have returned things to balance. Let's look at the flip side of that. So let's look at another solution. Here we see we've got our amino acid, we have some waters, and we have two hydrogens. But what if there's some change to the solution and one of those hydrogens is removed. Now our solution is hydrogen deficient. We only have the one hydrogen ion. Well, what's going to happen? Fortunately, this is where the acidic end or the carboxyl end of our amino acid can become our friend. That hydrogen is going to pop right off of that oxygen. And now we end up with a negative charge on this oxygen, but our hydrogen becomes ionized. And now we have another H plus and we have two. So each end of the amino acid, and therefore each end of a protein, can either add hydrogen ions to the solution in case the solution becomes basic, or like we saw previously with this nitrogen here, it can remove excess hydrogen ions from solution in the case the solution becomes too acidic. So I hope that helps. I know it was a very brief explanation, but um, that's really all there is to it. It's not any more difficult than that. 